a world controlled by corrupt politicians. You got a business. That, you didn't build that. A team of ordinary men emerge from the ashes to give voice to the voiceless and hope to the hopeless. Sackhead Sean. Dude, I'm not saying Kaff is stupid, bro. Sackhead Clint. All good friends of ours usually show, show up drunk. drunk. Also starring Socko as the producer. I'm a little bit drunk, I'm a little bit drunk, cause I'm drinking, drinking, drinking. They are the Sackheads Radio Show. Every Wednesday at 8 p.m. Pacific on SHRmedia.com. This is Tammy Jackson, inviting you to join me on The Tammy Jackson Show every Tuesday night at 7 p.m. Pacific on the405radio.com. Put down that remote and tune into the show that covers politics, guns in the Second Amendment, religious liberties, sanctity of life, the military, and more. I host newsworthy guests and work hard to be a conservative radio show that's not like all the others. So save Tuesday nights at 7 p.m. Pacific for me, Tammy Jackson, on the 405 News. Ready? The best late night conservative talk show in America. That is radio. And listen, there are no people better on the air to give you the best in conservative talk than Sackhead Sean and Sackhead Clint. Uh, and uh, we're working on some immigration papers for a certain other guy who happens to work here, too. But <laughs> for those who are tuning in around the world to the best late night conservative talk, Packheads Radio. So that's Saco, too. How do you know this? I do. 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 <laughs> the best late night conservative talk show in America. Why do we have to stack about ten times in a row? Because we bring the sack. And in this web was a large, I'm pretty sure it was the biggest spider I've ever seen. <laughs> we made it. We we made it. Nick of time. We made it. We made it as always. We, we made it. Somebody else hasn't made it. Yeah. How are you? I don't even want to talk about him. About who? Exactly. Did this become a show where we voted somebody off the island? Like out of the I studio? I feel like we accidentally did. I, I, we didn't even do it on purpose. Um, and, and you know what? This could be our own doing, and here is why. Okay. Um, it's possible the cage is too good. I, mean, I, so, I told you not to throw the sawdust in the corner. <laughs> I did. I said the no. The little guy loves to rub in it. He does. He but, gets and, on his back and but, shakes like a little, like a little chinchilla. But this is why I told you: do not throw sawdust down in there. He begged us and he begged us. I said, "Look, put the put the recycled tire pieces." <laughs> but he gets caught in his fur. I, I don't. Yes. I don't care, but then you were worried about, well, with the wildfires here in California, if that catches fire, the fumes would be toxic, whereas at least the cedar, the, the, you know, the, the sawdust is just, is just natural. So we need to change our hashtag from free Saco to wear Saco. That would, be, that would be the thing to do. And the thing is, I know he's been active on his Facebook. Oh, yes. Oh, I know he has. Right? I know he has. So he's he is hiding. He's hiding in plain sight, which I don't like. Right. So we need to. Get and the fact that he's been in successful thus far. Right. We may need to send him to Iran. <laughs> and Iran. No. Um, yeah. It, you know, it's one of those things that. Listen. You need to tweet at Sako Taco One S O K O T A C O One uh-huh. and ask him where the hell he's been, because this is the second week in the row. Right? He was here last week. Right. Uh, no, he was not here last week. The week before last. I'm sorry. But this time, he's MIA, baby. Again. He, uh, yeah. Not it, a call? It's almost like Chuck Norris is the only person that can find him. No flowers? <laughs> Nothing. 
I'm just saying it's it's a little strange. Everyone, I have a matchup. We have not had a matchup in a long time. Chuck Norris and Clint Eastwood. I'm gonna go with Chuck. Are you really? I'm going with Clint. And here's why. Okay. When Chuck Norris does push-ups, his body doesn't go up. The The earth earth goes goes down. down. That's that's right. But while he's pushing the earth down, Clint Eastwood would tell him to make his day. Yeah, that's great. No, it is great. What? <laughs> Clint Eastwood is the man with no name. He was... He's like a ghost in how many Western movies? All of them. Yeah. <laughs> oh, by the way, it's the 5th of August, 2015. <laughs> you listen to the Sackheads radio show. <laughs> how did we get off to a stupid start? I, We're better than this. You know why? Because Sacco's not here. I know, right? And we haven't heard from him, and, and it needed to be thrown out there. It's actually a little concerning. Yeah, actually, we were kind of having this discussion, and then the show interrupted us, and so we have to continue the discussion. <laughs> us being the is, professionals that we right, are. Right, is how we... I have a story. Okay. So you folks may have heard Sean say the following words. When have you ever known me to waste food? <laughs> And before tonight, I never had an answer. Uh, uh-huh. But tonight, uh-huh. for the first time in history, uh-huh. in recorded history. Recorded, right. That's important. Right. Um, Sean <laughs> wasted food. Sean was personally right now, responsible <laughs> for wasting three meatballs. Three. Count them. Three. And some bread. Yeah. Here's what happened. We went to a sandwich shop for dinner. We did. And there was a special. There was. The number 16. Uh-huh. Which was not a meatball sandwich. It was not. It was an Italian sandwich. Uh-huh. Sean ordered the number 6 <laughs> and forgot the teen. <laughs> so when... Well, unlike the, you, I don't have hang on a second. on my mind all the time. So when... when <laughs> The worker turned around with a meatball sandwich mid-making. I believe she would be called a sandwich artist. The person that works at Togo's. Yeah. Yeah. The teenager of minimum wage. Uh, Sean says, that's not the number six, and proceeds to have an argument. There was, was, ah, no, there was this no is not, argument. This is no. my story. <laughs> Proceeds that, and, and the lady says, yes, this is the number six. And Sean said, no, got a little uppity. Said, <laughs> no, the number six is the special, and it sure as heck isn't a meatball sandwich. <laughs> to which the entire line was aghast. It's all true. <laughs> and the poor girl said, I'm, I'm sorry, sir. But the number 16 is the special. (laughs) Sean pauses for a good 30 seconds while they lock eyes. Because now this gal is daring to challenge Sean on food. I had sweat on my brow. You you did. Sean slowly retrieves his glasses. (laughs) Thumb. Alternate. On each side with the remaining three fingers up in the air, uh-huh. if you can picture this, slowly slides the glasses over his ears and onto his face, <laughs> releases them in dramatic form, lets out a heavy sigh as if he is about to educate this poor young lady, looks up at the board and says, and, and looked like Donald Duck when he was about to say something to Bugs Bunny, but he's just completely silenced. And says, you're right. (laughs) And was completely deflated after that. bad per se but it's just something that definitely needs to be addressed over the next few weeks 
Um, and there's a little thing called blood pressure that might have to come down to. But, you know, other than that. Right. <laughs> so I'm going to be taking the rest of this week from the Edge of Liberty off. Um, I, I have to step away from some of my duties here at SHR. I'm not nothing dramatic. I'm just trying to answer everybody's uh, uh, queries as to where I've been. Um, so it's probably going to be this week and next week from Edge, and then I'm hoping to get back into it uh, the couple weeks after. But, you know, a really good friend of ours, Jeff Donnitz, who hosts, who hosts Rogue Nation here on SHR Media, you know, he immediately said family's first, everything else is second. And, and I wholeheartedly agree with that. Um, I know certainly the team here at SHR agrees with that. Dan Butcher, uh, once again, is just stepping in and picking up a lot of my mm-hmm. slack and handling business. Um and so I, I, I have to say thank you to everyone who's been asking and inquiring because it really makes you feel good uh, that many people actually care. Um, and uh, I, I'm going to be back at it um, tonight. Obviously, I'm here next week. I'm off. I have to be off next week. I can't miss mm-hmm. uh, next week. And then uh, hopefully the situation will be semi-normal, um, unlike my hairline and my affinity for throwing away food. Right. So, <laughs> and your waistline. Um, now, there is, there is one person. There's no such thing as a normal waistline for me. <gasps> right. You're like, a, you're like a fire plug. With one nipple. <laughs> <laughs> or, or a tree trunk. A tree I don't know. Um, there is one person who clearly doesn't care. And that's Sako. Because once again. Has no idea what's going on. None. None, and and he's missing, um, <laughs> in action. Which I think they made a movie about, which might have been Chuck Norris to kind of bring it around Chuck. It was Chuck, full baby. circle. Yeah, <laughs> full Chuck, baby. We brought it right back around again. See, see, I brought it right back around to full Chuck. But if you were to get on a horse, you would be pale rider. <laughs> if you got on a horse. <laughs> It'd be a great movie. Would, um, you'd have to go all around the barnyard.net. Anyways, it's right, not important. It's not yeah. important. Safe but just, off, actually, um, for once. It's right. Uh, that would be me on a horse. Um, hey, a lot of things happened this week. There's nothing happening this week. So I want to thank you guys for listening to the show. We'll see you next week. We'll see you next week. Good night, America. <laughs> Hopefully something awesome happens next week. <laughs> so Russia... Um, submitted a claim to the United Nations. Oh, goody. And they are trying to claim a large uh, portion, about 463,000 square miles of Arctic sea shelf. Oh, it's um, theirs. Uh, right. Well, the reason they're doing this is they're looking for um, oil and nat- and uh, natural gas rights Why? in the region. That's an excellent question, Sean. <laughs> Thanks. I kind of do this for a living. Let, <laughs> let me answer. Okay. <laughs> so, so about 25%, uh, it's estimated about 25% um, of our untapped uh, natural gas supplies and oil supplies are in the Arctic region. 25%, so a quarter of, of, the, of the world's untapped supplies, uh, One resources. For now, those who went to right. or, or Core. Or 0.25. Well, I think in Common Core, it's, it's like... Um, Two pieces of Hershey's chocolate. I think that's a quarter of the bar. You know, they have the little squares. Yeah, but isn't it... Is it four yeah, across? I think it's eight total. It's four so across, right? Two, that's a quarter. I don't think. I think it's four across. No, it's four by one, isn't it? No, I don't oh, think four so. four by two, rather? No? Yeah. I think it's four by... What am I... Which two? candy bar am I thinking? I don't know. You, you, there's so many that go through your mouth. Right, so that it's you, one of the caramellos. Right. Okay. Now that we're... Correct. It is one... Of the caramel. You're welcome, Common Core people. Right. Um, or for Common Core people, take a pie, slice it into four pieces, take three. Give them to your friends because it's socialism in this country. Right. And then and eat the last one, one right. and there's none left, and that's how much of the uh, Arctic ice is going to be left. Anyways, because of global warming. That's for <laughs> Common Core people. So they're claiming up they're, they're, they're extending... <laughs> They're extending about 350 uh, nautical miles from the shore and uh, and trying to take this region. Um, there's lots of countries, including the United States, um, that have been been trying to get jurisdiction over certain parts of, of that region, including, like I said, the U.S., uh, Norway, Canada, Denmark, um, have all tried to get um, have all been competing. Santa Claus have all been competing for. For um, this now, you bring up an interesting point, and I was actually going to get to Santa Claus here in a little bit. You kind of stole my thunder on a, a little bit, but I'm I'm not there yet. Okay. 
So in, in 2002, Russia first submitted its claim uh, to this region to the UN. Um, but the UN said, no, sorry, hey, there's not enough evidence um, to show that you have a legitimate claim um, in this area. Um, at one point, Russia, like, went through with the submarine and, like, ejected a Russian flag and put it on the bottom of the seafloor in the area. just like a symbolic... First of all, I think that's hilarious. So does that mean we own the moon? Right. Well, no, France does because all the flags are white now because of all the arrays, right. So I think I think it was like a lease program. I think we had it for a little bit, and then when all the flags went white, it, like, defaulted to France. Um, so... So... They've they've resur- they've they've resubmitted now um, their 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 claim to this region and the reason this was important to me and I wanted to touch on it tonight because we've talked about Russia here in the past on the show in the in the recent past and we defeated the Soviet Union in large part due to our energy policy right huge and you know this and Put, uh, Putin Vlad the putt putt has learned. Um, obviously, he was around during the Cold War times. He's a Cold Warrior, and I think we th- we think here th- that he's trying to put the band back together. And so he understands where the Soviet Union fell apart before, and I think he's trying to get a- get ahead of the whole energy thing now, understanding exactly how critical it is, particularly to the, to the survival of uh, and the strength of of Russia. Mm-hmm. Um, of course, Greenpeace is all up in arms about it, um, but. Again, well, they're not up in arms. Of course, they're all up in like marijuana plants. All, I don't, I don't know, whatever the heck. They're they, all up in flippers. <laughs> they're, they're all up in, they're all up in Birkenstocks over this whole thing. <laughs> we really got that patchouli oil in the flurry. <laughs> right. <laughs> Their dreadlocks are flying all over the place. <laughs> Yeah, so Tom's toothpaste is just emptied all over the place. They're just pissed. <laughs> right. So 193, all of the 193 uh, UN members got all of the paperwork, including all the coordinates, um, all, all the charts. Um, but what's interesting is Russia has also uh, been beefing up Russian military yes, very in much the so. area. Um, so they have, uh, they restored an old... Um, Soviet Union era military base in mm-hmm. the New Siberian Islands. Um, they've they've kind of reactivated other older military outposts uh, in in the region. Um, they have uh, um, uh, conducted military operations in the area. If you remember earlier this year, they had um, several thousand, I think like thirty eight thousand troops, uh, fifty plus warships and submarines, and over a hundred aircraft in the area, all doing drills, um, basically demonstrating their ability to easily mobilize in that area and defend what that area what they believe to be their claims now this brings up you brought up an interesting point just a few minutes ago poor santa claus right right like what if santa claus puts a claim to the energy because who knows what Administration back because Santa Claus's name is exist to him is Saint Nicholas, right? And so you can't obviously it's religious, right? So we can't would, back that. So it would be a religious war if Santa he Claus Russia. were to he okay. back Russia. Okay, but you look at the uh, uh, Russia's really like you said mobilizing, and moving some things around. The age of their equipment has been showing at least with their aircraft because they've suffered five or six serious crashes over the last two months, um, all on fairly mundane. Um, approaches landings nothing it wasn't like they were in the middle of war games and they were crashing out um as we've seen uh, as recently as july 4th we've been having airspace incursions with yep. the russians coming over did they put because the, they were talking about putting ejection seats into some of their helicopters <laughs> because of that problem that was the polish military was that what it was <laughs> okay i knew it was one well, of there them. goes all our polish <laughs> listeners <laughs> I'm going to miss that guy. Um, so, <laughs> Sorry. I loved you in your debates with Archie Bunker. <laughs> you were awesome. <laughs> um, so obviously he knows this. We've talked about this. He's not a fool. He, he's a tactician. Wh- which one? Obama uh, or Putin? Putin? 
will, um, as as a KGB officer, right? Um, and had a lot of power and influence, and was on the inside track. So he understands exactly what the demise of the Soviet Union was, and he understands the cause too. Exactly, um, but he also understands how to. Things that he really needed to do from the beginning is get the military strong. Because without a strong military, all that other stuff is nothing. But in order to sustain that, you, you need, need energy. You need to have energy. Right? right. You need to have that income. You need to have something. Do you smell something burning? No. Do you? Yes. Oh. And with this nose, I'm trusting that over yeah, yours. Yeah, I was going to say, I'm, I'm in. Right. Do we need to evacuate the studio? I don't know. Uh, is I'll the, do a walk around. Is, is Russia listening right now? And they've <laughs> like in check, in <laughs> check or Greenpeace <laughs> or Santa Claus I, I, or Obama. Who's after us tonight? Who's after us tonight? Who's lighting the studio? No, because we would fight for Santa Claus. Where the hell, Sako? And he knows that. Is Sako setting us on fire? Is Sako an agent? Ooh. Well, he's from that area, right? He's one of those people. Right. He is. Uh, we've talked about the soft air when he wasn't around. He's uh, all, all the time. He's a Armenian. He's Armenian. Um, <laughs> most people can't find it on a map, but you can't trust him whatsoever. The blatant bigot at it again. <laughs> <laughs> um, but, the, I, you know, Russia wants to be perceived as a threat. Um, we know this. They, they, they want to be. The they want to be the them. superpower. Absolutely, they want to get that superpower status back. You cannot do it without energy. They know that. They can start rebuilding their equipment now, but four or five years to be able to run that equipment. They have aircraft carriers. I think that mm -hmm. are in production. They have some new airplanes coming out. Um, new tank that they just put out. Uh, a couple other things in order to actually keep those up and running. Like you said. Resources, resources, resources. Yeah. They need to sell as much as they can they, and use as much as they can, export whatever they don't use, what I mean to say. You now, and, and you watch a big, if this deal... Let's work together on this. How can we, we all make this happen? There for something anyhow. You might as well deliver a little message for us. And then on the back side of that flag... SHR Media. Or SHR Media Radio. with our pictures and the giant middle fingers. I'm just saying it's a good idea. I, th I think it's a brilliant idea. <laughs> Joe Biden, if you're listening... <laughs> Joe! If you were listening, sir... Uncle Joe. And if you could have a United States... I dare you. Navy submarine... We just had to dare Joe Biden. I double dare you, Joe. I triple dog dare you. Get it's like rich etiquette. Hey, you know what? You're going to enter soon. You want to get a bump in those polls? You want people to trust you on uh, defending the homeland and keeping Russia in their place? Email Sean at shrmedia.com. Give me a line on a sub. I don't need it for long. I just need to deploy a flag. <laughs> Right. It's not a lot, and and we need giant uh, pruning shears on the front, <laughs> can you do so that? that we can cut one down as we plant the other one. <laughs> I just, just picture, a big scissor mechanism. I just picture an, uh, like a month from now, you see Joe in a cold suit dive into the north. <laughs> <laughs> Where's the uh, vice president? Uh, the vice president's taking an expedition to the North Pole. Wait, what? What? <laughs> He's in one of the seal releases on the uh, the seal <laughs> mobile releases outside the sub. <laughs> All right, guys, got to get this goddamn flag off the ground, uh, Mr. Vice President. That's not that's not even a wetsuit, sir. That's more like a janitor suit. Yeah, I'm ready to go. <laughs> <laughs> and that's that. That is actually not an SCBA system you're wearing right there. That's actually just like one of those janitors dust masks and goggles. So yeah, that's a, that's actually a World War One era mustard gas. <laughs> Yeah, water's cold. Got it. Let's go. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, water's cold. Don't hold my breath. Have a beer waiting for me. And a hooker. Because <laughs> it's cold. I got to warm up when I'm done. This has been your vice president, Joe Biden. <laughs> Underwater adventurer. Vote for me now. Bing, bing. Just... <laughs>
I just picture all his upcoming campaign you know, commercials <laughs> just to have the worst special effects. Like a used car salesman, like, hey, it's Joe from the White House, and I want to sell you the presidency in 2016. You know who I want to see have a conversation, and most of our listeners are not going to get this, but a very few will. The older ones? I, I want drunk Joe Biden to have a conversation and to hang out for an hour with drunk peaches. Oh, <laughs> <laughs> Oh, our friend Peaches. The two of those would do some right. damage. Our friend Peaches uh, is a male. So this kills me because we know Peaches. Now, if you guys don't know Peaches, this isn't funny, but this is actually <laughs> hilarious. Time. He only goes by Peaches in certain situations. In certain situations. Th- but this would be one of those this situations. This would absolutely be one of those situations. This would situations. be a Peaches situation. Joe and Peaches take on the world. I, you know what the sad It would part become is? Peaches and Buttercup. They would solve... That's a good one. They would solve more problems than we'd give them credit for. Oh, yeah. You know what I mean? Like, yeah. Belly's too full for drinking? We get a, we get a fix for that. Um, you know, <laughs> Right. Your Ford Pinto won't start? We get a fix to that. Right. Like, you die spontaneously and reboot every <laughs> 10 years? <laughs> we got a fix. <laughs> We're coming back a couple years ago from <laughs> Reno. With Peaches. With, peaches is in the back seat, our buddy Peaches. With me. With you and our buddy Jerbop. Where was T? T was driving. Okay. Liberal Jake was riding Liberal hump. Jake was there. Liberal Jake was riding hump, and I was <laughs> in the passenger seat. So, uh, for those who don't know Peaches, he's built kind of like me, only more bald. <laughs> if that's even possible, right. I swear to God. <laughs> so, we're riding back, and all of a sudden... Sackhead Clint at the time goes, uh, guys, and I turn around, and Peaches is the color of a plum. Purple. Literally. Literally purple. And he's not breathing and slumped over to the side and sweating. But it wasn't like a normal sweat. It was like somebody turned a sprinkler onto him. Like, yeah, it was it was bizarre. I, I couldn't find a pulse. All of this is a true story. I couldn't find a pulse. Could not find a pulse. I immediately checked. I could not find T- a radial pulse. <laughs> T's driving says a couple words I can't say. And I think it was some like shit. Now I got a dead guy in my truck. Cuts from the two lane to the breakdown lane because I think he was just going to throw him out. I re- <laughs> no, we were. Remember, we discussed it as he was pulling over abruptly. All of a sudden. One of us, I think it was you. It was me. Put your hand on his shoulder to kind of right him to open his airway. Like we, it was bad, folks. I am not right. kidding you. Yeah, we had this. We had, this part is we, funny now. At the time, we thought we were going to be doing CPR on our buddy who was in the truck with us. No, we were about to start. Like yeah. literally, no pulse, no respirations. We like were, we were getting was, ready. Yeah. All of a sudden, you get a. He, he no, just, it was. It wasn't right away. By the time we stopped, we're we talking a minute. Right. Oh. Justin, we just leave him on his first horse that way. <laughs> but then all of a sudden he goes, <laughs> what, What's everyone looking at? Why are we stopped? I kid you not. All the color comes back to him like nothing. He, why are we pulled over? And we're all staring at him like the kids in Goonies. <laughs> we have nothing to say. And then turns around. And we've all seen a couple of things in our lives. Yeah, like here and there. Right. He then turns around and goes, did it happen again? No, no, no. Well, first, I think it was T that said... It one time what? happened on a plane coming back it from Vegas an to San Francisco, and I had to be revived by a trauma doctor and a nurse who happened to be sitting behind me. It happens. Like, no, like everything was right as rain. Like, there was absolutely nothing to worry about. Right. I swear on my soul, this is a true story. <laughs> to this day. <laughs> He'll talk about himself dying on a regular basis. <laughs> he said he should come with a warning tag or something, right? Right. Caution, I die occasionally. Right. So Don't worry about it. So that's how... Do I- not resuscitate.
Oh, just a couple, what, less than 24 hours now. We're going to have the the president, first presidential debate. I don't care. That's the best story. <laughs> I can't believe we just told we it on the air. We're talking about more of the SHR <laughs> Media Network. Stay tuned. <laughs> In a world controlled by corrupt Jesus. politics. You got a business. That, you didn't build that. A team of ordinary men emerge from the ashes to give voice to the voiceless and hope to the hopeless. Sackhead Sean. Dude, I'm not saying cow. Who listens to the Andrea K Show? Let's find out as we eavesdrop on listener Roger Johnson in Encinitas. You know, if our policy is going to be bring any child, any child who comes across the border, Okay, so apparently Roger fell asleep in the middle of my brilliant political tirade, and now he plans to sue me because I put him on the air? Sleeping? Obviously, he's a liberal. Snoring. Not an option while listening to The Andrea K Show, Tuesday mornings at 11 on Financial News and Talk. You know I'm right. Y'all know I'm right. Hello, I'm Matt, a student at Hillsdale College. Here is Hillsdale President Larry Arn on the continuing relevance of the Constitution. Many argue today that the Constitution is outdated because it addresses problems peculiar to the 18th century. Some parts of the Constitution do read rather quaintly. Consider the injunction against title. Outdated. The purpose of the injunction is to prevent the government granting special privileges to some for partisan reasons. This strikes at the heart of the rule of law. The crony capitalism so common today is a place where the government bestows favors and tax dollars on some businesses to give them a leg up over others. This is exactly the kind of thing the Constitution was meant to prohibit. The Constitution is not so outdated after all. This Constitution Minute was brought to you by Hillsdale College. To join the national conversation on the Constitution, go to constitutionminute.com. And ladies and gentlemen, welcome back to the Sackheads Radio Show. <laughs> oh man, I even told Peaches we told the story, and he, he he'll tell you if you ever meet him, hundred percent true, every single part of it. Did he respond back yet? Of course he did. He, and well, he wants to now. I got like fifty-two text messages from him because he wants to talk about it. <laughs> Let me see your phone because this is your segment to introduce. No, I just want to see. I'm not no. going to flip through pictures again. No, last time, no. So, No, you're dead right with that. Keep going okay. with that. Okay. George Pataki <laughs> and Jim. played Sulu on <laughs> <laughs> And Jim Gilmore, and I think he had some girls that did a show. No, I don't he, know he had the that. Happy Movie. Oh, that's right. Yeah. That's right. Because uh, that's when he was running for governor of Virginia, Find these right? People. <laughs> what do you mean, these? Really? Blatant bigot, these people? <laughs> the blatant bigot. Why? Because they're all white? Um, except for Bob. <laughs> with us tonight just keep going i know just keep going please so i'm interested in i'm interested in the undercard debate uh because i want to hear what uh, carly fiorina has to say and um i actually i want to hear um rick perry also I, yes. I i don't i don't care at all to hear Lindsey graham whatever she has to say um <laughs> what Lindsay? that's a girl's name right i I think Carly Carly's going to beat that broad's rear end. 
Oh, yeah. Yeah, yeah that broad Lindsay's done. Yeah. She is just... Yeah. Is it inappropriate if I call him Graham Cracker because he's white? Would that be no, racist? No, I think that's perfect. Okay. But wait a minute. I am the blatant bigot. So you call him Graham I'll Cracker. Call him, I'll... <laughs> I'll call him Graham Cracker. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> so that Graham Cracker. Right. Um, and Sulu. So I'm, I'm interested to hear what they have to say, and, I, and I'm wondering, and I don't know the answer to this, are the questions going to be the same? I don't think so. I wouldn't think so either, but... Because I think it's... So how do you differentiate, different. right? Because they're still part of the current presidential field. Technically. So, no, they are. I mean, they're not the top ten on the average of the five polls that they took or what, whatnot, but they are still in this race. So how do you have a separate debate, or how do you bring up separate issues from one group of candidates mm -hmm. and then separate issues for another group of candidates? No, I agree. It should be the same. It won't. I probably won't. Be. It might be the same questions, different staff, though. Or, or same. You covered Barbara Pohl in the strip. I did, and that's what I, that was my point, right. so I wanted to clarify. A couple a couple names I didn't expect to be that low, honestly, um, was Rick Perry. That was the one that really sticks out to me. I thought he would actually be doing better at this point. Um, Santorum, I'm not shocked. Uh, I'm not either. Uh, Bobby Jindal, I'm a little bit. Bobby Jindal and Carly Fiorina, I'm a little shocked at. that they. I'm not shocked at Carly Fiorina because she's, she's not well known outside of California. Right. So, uh, so I'm really not shocked. She's starting to make. She's making that name for herself. But I'm not shocked that she's in the in the in the bottom seven. Uh, but I'm a little little surprised at Bobby Jindal. I'm not surprised uh, that Lindsey Graham is in the bottom. I'm I'm actually I'm actually pleased. Right. No. I'm. Listen. There's some people that just need to 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 go away. Uh, former Virginia Governor Jim Gilmore of uh, of the TV show The Gilmore Girls. Um, that needs to go away. I don't think Pataki, I don't think, brings anything to the debate. Bobby Jindal absolutely does. Rick uh, Perry absolutely does. Santorum is a waste of time. Um, you, you know, And then Huckabee being in the top ten, I don't think... This is my problem with I'm this. I'm surprised. So let's start talking about the top yeah, let's ten. Let's talk about who's in the top ten. Because there's some people that I absolutely disagree with being up there. Huckabee's number one. Um, I, I just don't... I, I don't see Huckabee doing anything more than, than reiterating the things that he's done the last 15 times he's run. Um, I, 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 I like him as a commentator. I like him as a person. Yeah, he's a, not a bad person. but No, uh, not at all. Oh, I, Ohio Governor John Kasich. I know why he's there because we need Ohio. We need to win Ohio in the swing state, and he's going to support whoever. That, that's why Kasich's in the run. Chris Christie, I don't think belongs. I don't either. I, I I don't think he's done enough at all for this campaign or anything. Um, and I we can talk about numbers, but let's talk about people who should be there and who shouldn't be. That's my issue with the way this was decided. Um, uh, Donald Trump, absolutely. Jeb Bush, as much I don't like him, has the His clout, politics has the clout to be into this debate, and actually, you need a Jeb Bush to make the real conservatives stand out, right? So, I mean, that's the one good thing that Jeb Bush kind of brings and to Chris this debate. Christie and Chris Christie, and I, I think Christie's even right of Jeb, um, not far right of Jeb, but him and Kasich, I think, are a little bit right of Jeb. But I, Jeb is uh, uh, what's the word I'm. as the person to vote for that should be the immediate stay away right they're destroy they're, they're they're hating on donald trump and listen we talked about it before the show mm -hmm. the one thing that donald trump brings to this um 
And I don't agree with everything the man says. Of course I, I, not. I've been on record as saying that I, I, I doubt his political history. He was a Clinton supporter. Yeah, he donated to the Clinton uh, Foundation. I know there's some old footage out there where he's kind of saying what he's saying now pro 15 years ago. Pro-choice. He, he's got some pro-choice statements. Yeah, so I, I don't agree with his politics, but... Uh, not all of his politics. Right. But what's... People are. Th this is his numbers are a rebuke to politicians. They aren't even necessarily for Donald Trump as much as against politicians. You know what I think they're for. I I, I don't know that I agree with that statement a hundred percent. I think I know where 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 that statement's coming from, mm -hmm. um, and so I agree with it to an extent. Mm -hmm. But I think that his numbers are high because even if he were a politician. Um, people, I think, like the fact that he is going to do what he he says. If he says he's gonna he's gonna build a fence between us and Mexico and make Mexico pay for it, mm -hmm. if a politician said that, eh. nobody would believe it. But Donald Trump says it, and you're like, yeah, he, you know what? He might actually pull this yeah, off. In yeah, this, yeah, somehow I, in this mixed mixed up crazy world. I believe you. He means it. Um, and I think that's what appeals to people because people are so used to politicians pandering to them and 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 saying whatever it is that we're going to fight Obamacare and we're going to get rid of all this progressive agenda blah, 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 thing. and nope, nothing happens. And I think people are tired of that. And with Trump, it's a breath of fresh air. I don't think every or backs everything that he says 100% mm -hmm. because you're not going to agree with anybody 100% of the time. No, but it's principles. They may, they may fundamentally disagree with him on, on several issues, but I think they're supportive because they say, you know what, at least we know what we're getting with this guy. But it's principles. And, and at the end of the day, like you said, Trump is who he says. And after 2014, you can imagine why so many people are doubtful, right? Can you blame anybody to doubt any politician, including the actual conservatives that are on this ticket? Yeah, I have to say something about Kasich. Okay, I'm done, I guess. No, I just... I, you brought up Kasich earlier, and at this point, has been kind of stewing in my brain. <laughs> okay. You said you don't believe he belongs in the top ten. And I agree with you. I think he was like bottom of the top ten, right? Mm -hmm. Or one, one, either number ten or number nine. I don't, I don't remember. But I think he was towards towards the bottom. Um, but he's he's leading in in Ohio, which is where the state uh, the debates being held. But in his statement, he says, "As governor, I'm glad to welcome my fellow debate participants to our great state, and I look forward to discussing the issues facing our country with them on Thursday." Like he's in charge, <laughs> right? Like he's the man to be. Ooh, hey guys, welcome to the house. Have a seat. Yeah, don't put your feet up on the couch. I'm glad you're all here. Uh, this is my debate. No, exactly. I I don't necessarily know if he means it like that as much as. Um, I'm governor of the state. It, it, Welcome. It's my home state. Come on in. Have a good time. Sit down. Hope it goes well for you. I, I don't or think, not. I don't think he's that douchey. I, I don't think so, but maybe he is. I mean, hey, listen, it could be a little... Back like a little power show, play, right? Right? This is our house. Protect our house. Who knows? I don't know if Kasich, in the words protect... We don't know what the question is going to be. We know what the topics are most likely going to be. We Maybe. know, right. So I would love to sit here and guess at it, but it's not going to do us any good. I, I, I think that you'll see the top two people to come out of this debate will be the top two debaters on that. And I don't mean that I'm going to actually give you who I think it would be. Um, and people may be shocked. Trump will win popularity, but as far as facts and Actual solutions, I think that you're going to see Scott Walker, um, Ted Cruz. Rubio. Oh, I was going to throw out Ben Carson. Were you? I think Ben Carson's been preparing for this for a while, and I think he's ready to go for this. I'm, I'm not saying he's going to win, but I think his answers are going to surprise a lot of people. I think he's going to be the most well-prepared. I think Rand Paul will be pretty well-prepared. Yeah. I, I, I'm just telling you who I thought would be at the top. 
Okay. I don't think Rand Paul is going to be at the top. I don't think he'll be the top. Foreign policy, he's going to get destroyed. I don't think so. Um, I think he's he's trying to make enough of a separation there, and he he, while you may not agree with his foreign pol with all of his foreign policy, he has a sound constitutional argument, and I think as long as he frames his position in that way, I, I think he'll score. I think he'll score points. I don't think he, I agree with you. I don't think he's going to be at the top. I don't think the popularity aspect. Is I, I, I be think there for I think him. Trump is going to come out popular P pretty well because he's he's he says he's not preparing i'm guessing he's preparing, he's preparing. i'm guessing he's preparing that's what like you're saying but here's the thing have you eaten recently and you say no, no i threw uh, a meatball sandwich away but it would actually be true i'm just preparing to eat now right I, I don't think he's preparing in the same way see trump is intelligent enough that he understands he understands how things work Right, I don't think Trump is the kind of guy where he needs to know specifics in terms of it's sixty three or it's sixty three point two five seven. Right, right. I think he can get away with it's about sixty three, and this is what we have to do. And for I'm okay here, with for, that answer. Right, because uh, you're right. The point two five seven seems, is is BS. We don't care. Right, but those are the things that be that that. that i agree with you about walker i don't know about ben carson um i think i, I think marco rubio look we saw him at, uh, at i have to say this yeah ben carson is my what's another word for it the only black thing that, uh, no he's not well he is oh i, I I've, I've heard he's my dark horse in this race Real, really really <laughs> really Really blatant bigot. Blatant bigot strikes again. I think he's gonna do far <laughs> or better than anyone. You wanna have a Lipizzano stallion talk to while we're at it? <laughs> he's gonna do far better than anyone expected. <laughs> and there's no other term. Why? Because there's no expectations for him? Like what are you meaning? And you were no, being so it's because he hasn't been very vocal. People aren't giving him as much consideration as I think they should. I think that even Fox and some other people have pushed him off to the side and already, have already written him out of this conversation. And I think that because of that, he is going to surprise a lot of people in this debate. He may surprise some. I don't know that he's going to really come out uh, towards the top. Um, you know, like I said, I think Marco Rubio will, will do a, a, a very good job. Mm -hmm. um, like 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 I said, you know, we saw him speak at Freedom Fest and he I thought he was great. Yeah, uh, I thought, no, I, I thought I, he was great. He's, you know, very, he had a great speech. Very organic, mm -hmm. very down to earth. Look, he he comes from a working, a hard working class. Absolutely. Family. I mean, and he gets it. He's been there. He understands. He's, he's not part of that, or he wasn't. He didn't come from that establishment, um, established money family. You know, like a like a Jeb Bush. Uh, no, he's a he's a, a self made person. Mm-hmm. Um, so, and same thing with Scott Walker, uh, and I think people relate f to that. You know, um, I, I think that's going to be actually what hurts Trump because Trump came from a pretty well-off family, mm -hmm. and, and that's eventually going to get played against him if it's not already tomorrow night. So, who else do you see coming out, uh, uh, making some serious headway in this debate? You, you know, we t we talked about we talked about Ted Cruz. You, you talked about Ted Cruz. Um, Ted Cruz is one of the only candidates that I've seen that really kind of seems to be taking Donald Trump seriously. Mm -hmm. um, you know, he came out and he's, said that uh, he's commended uh, Donald Trump for, for having, the quote, the courage to speak out and in particular to shine the light on the problem of illegal immigration. Um, he, so I think... I think Ted Cruz is very smart in doing this. And I say that because Donald Trump is polling very strong right now. Mm -hmm. People are liking him, and we already, we already discussed that and, and perhaps some of the reasons why. I think Ted Cruz acting this way towards Trump is... Deflects. No, I think he's going to pick up some of that 
other that momentum with him and kind of ride that wave, right? Because if everybody's attacking Trump and they're That Trump wave where the other candidates will not at all. And the other thing, too, is by saying that and putting that little bit of goodwill into his position on Trump, it keeps Trump from maybe going after him as much as well. It does, but not only that, if Trump falters in the polls, if something happens, if he pulls out of the race, which he's not going to do if he's in the lead, but if something happens, where's Trump's support and gonna money going to go? Oh, absolutely. It's going to go to um, Ted Cruz, it, and you know what? Ted's position on this be, could be completely genuine or completely political. Either way, it's the way to go. Either way, it's a smart play. I think a- it absolutely. I is think it's smart the smartest play. play than any of the other candidates are are uh, are, are taking it. So uh, it'll be fun to see. Of course, it's the day after we're on. Why can't it be on a Tuesday night? So you're saying we're having a special show tomorrow night? No, I am not saying that whatsoever. No part of me is doing that. However, we did discuss. Twilight Zone type things that could be interesting um, uh, moving forward in this debate uh, or, or in this election, if you will. Let's say Donald Trump stays. Oh, we did talk about where this. He is right. Let's say he keeps leading all the way through to no- uh, October next year, leading into November. Let's say he gets the Republican nomination. Let's let's just, just say. Just say. Let's just say. I'll do the other side. Let's just say that Joe Biden, who is expect, expected to announce any day now, gets the Democratic nomination. Because Hillary's faltering. She may crash and burn. I think the luster of Sanders is starting to go away. The Dems are scared. They are in complete panic mode. Right. And I think you're going to see Joe throw his name in real soon. So let's say it's Trump v. Biden. I l- <laughs> Go on. Now. The way this came about <laughs> is we had a matchup. <laughs> we did. And the matchup was Trump v. Biden. And we were killing ourselves while we were eating our Togo sandwiches, picturing this fist fight. That the Trump that where Biden these two guys would just get pissed off and start fighting swinging and then a joke made of oh yeah ah you ripped my hair plugs out oh you ripped my hair plugs out and just like punching and kicking and biting and then turning into buddies and then 20 minutes later they're sitting on stage smoking cigars drinking a beer together think stepbrothers right think stepbrothers for a minute right and so so they they end up don't ever touch my drum set again (laughs) (laughs) <laughs> and then after we go, did we just become best friends? <laughs> did we just become best friends? So they get to like each other, respect each other, have the debates, and now they each get, the, each get their party's nomination. Now, unbeknownst to everybody else, they struck a backroom deal. <laughs> and immediately after securing their party's nominations, after the conventions are over, the vice presidential Nomination. matches Come are on. announced. Trump announces he chooses... Joe Biden. Bum, bum, bum. Joe Biden announces he chooses Donald Trump. Donald Trump. And then, <laughs> and then whoever gets the electoral win just picks the other is one. President. It doesn't matter. Right. 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 <laughs> just think how. I, uh, that was our Twilight Zone scenario, which will never happen, but I think it's hilarious. Let's politics out for a second. Right. Can you imagine a Trump Biden ticket? Yes, or I a could. Trump Biden White House. Or a Biden Trump. Or a Biden Trump. Yes, I, I could. I, I don't think it's the worst idea ever. I really don't. We've talked about the top two vote getters should be the president and vice president. That's well, look, how that's, California does it. A couple other states do it. Well, no, we have a governor and lieutenant governor. Well, okay. Actually, they run for office, but they could be of different parties. Exactly, but you know what I mean. They could be of different parties, which is how we used to do it in this country. Yeah, absolutely used to do it in this country. I think we should go back to that. really do and, and, and here is what makes it funnier we were talking can you just imagine 
uh, just because uh, Trump to me is this guy who gets up at five o'clock in the morning and he's working until eleven o'clock at night. Right. All business, right? Right. Um, and, and uh, in a good way. I'm not down on the man. No, no, all, not at all. But I'll, I'll just, go. Very so strong work ethic. You look at his office, and everybody is just nose to the grindstone all day. Get this done. Get this. Oh, we got to get this done. Everybody's in people. black suits oh, and yes. white shirts, right? And wingtips. And then you walk down the hall, right? And you hear little Jimmy Buffett music off in the distance, right? Right. Just picture this for a second. You smell a little bit of. Skunkish smell. <laughs> no, I wouldn't even say skunk. I would say like a tiki lamp. Let's say skunkish smell a because skunk-ish it's fun. And, and, and as you get closer, you know, you hear somebody singing two pina coladas, right? <laughs> and it's Joe. And it's Joe. <laughs> <laughs> and he's in there in like a, a, a grass skirt with a Hawaiian shirt, and, and, and you got to have the sombrero. Right, and then he switches to Margaritaville. Right. But the dirty bar piano. Uh, bar version absolutely the right. filthy one right and they're still working like everyone in the staff's just having a good time they're getting stuff done right but it's just a uh, totally different speed right <laughs> and, and you get hired and they're like well listen we're gonna hire you at the white house chief of staff uh, um but you have a choice right you can go work for trump or you can go work for joe which one's it going to be? Now, think about This is a t- difficult choice. It, it really is. You have Trump down the hall. You would learn everything. You'd learn a ton down the hall. you get some good, solid work done, whatever. And he would probably, if you do a good job, he would probably hire you, have a good position for you uh, right. when this whole gig is done. You look down the other hall, though. And, uh, you know. Uh, eh, Hawaiian shirts, oh, flip-flops. Yeah. Flipping, absolutely. Rum drinks. Uh, oh. <laughs> you just hear Joe... Slipped on a top. (laughs) (laughs) Blew out my flip flop. Joe, those aren't the right words. It doesn't matter. Had a pop top and I pop tart at home. (laughs) Joe, you just said pop tart 15 times. Cut off her dress top. All right, stop. (laughs) Which one would you choose? I don't know. Fun for four years? That'd be like going back to college, right? Except you're getting paid as an adult to do it. I don't know what I would choose. <laughs> so, so are you, do you take the do you take the practical choice and learn everything from Trump? Absolutely, right. I, I- Joe with a unicycle juggling friggin' rolling pins going down the hall. Nipple clips in a car battery. <laughs> Secret service is just out of their mind. <laughs> no! He rides out into the public area of the White We're House. We're up against a break. <laughs> uh, how many times did we lose Joe yesterday? Six. Really? Where'd you find them last time? Omaha. <laughs> Omaha? Was yeah. that a beat? Hillary and the Phoebes, live on the SHR Media Network. That sounds like a venereal disease. In a world <laughs> it is. by corrupt politicians. You got a business. That, you didn't build that. A team. Voice to the voiceless and hope to the hopeless. Sackhead Sean. Dude, I'm not saying calf for the stupid pro. Sackhead Clint. All good friends of ours usually show, show up drunk. drunk. Also starring Socko as the producer. I'm a little bit drunk, I'm a little bit drunk, cause I'm drinking, drinking, drinking. They are the Sackheads Radio Show. Every Wednesday at 8 p.m. Pacific on SHRmedia.com. This is Tammy Jackson, inviting you to join me on The Tammy Jackson Show every Tuesday night at 7 p.m. Pacific on the405radio.com. Put down that remote and tune into the show that covers politics, 
guns in the Second Amendment, religious liberties, sanctity of life, the military, and more. I host newsworthy guests and work hard to be a conservative radio show that's not like all the others. So save Tuesday nights at 7 p.m. Pacific from me, Tammy Jackson, on 405media.com. Who listens to the Andrea Kay Show? Let's find out as we eavesdrop on listener Roger Johnson in Encinitas. You know, if our policy is going to be bring any child, any child who comes across the country, Okay, so apparently Roger fell asleep in the middle of my brilliant political tirade, and now he plans to sue me because I put him on the air? Sleeping? Obviously, he's a liberal. Snoring. Not an option while listening to the Andrea K. Here's Hillsdale President Larry Arn on the continuing relevance of the Constitution. We argue today that the Constitution is outdated because it addresses problems peculiar to the 18th century. Some parts of the Constitution do read rather quaintly. Consider the injunction against titles of nobility in Article 1, Section 9 of the Constitution. But is that so outdated? The purpose of the injunction granting special privileges to some for partisan reasons. This strikes at the heart of the rule of law. The crony capitalism so common today is a place where the government bestows favors and tax dollars on some businesses to give them a leg up over others. This is exactly the kind of thing the Constitution was meant to prohibit. The Constitution is not so outdated after all. This Constitution Minute was brought to you by Hillsdale College. To join the national conversation on the Constitution, go to constitutionminute.com. Now, wait a second, because there's two more promos I have to play so I don't get yelled. The Reverb Comic Sense, Uncensored, Unfiltered, and only on shrmedia.com. And ladies and gentlemen, welcome back to the Sackheads Radio Show live on the SHR Media Network. Man, I get scolded when I forget to do promos. It's it's rough, right? I don't know, but I, I'm still on this idea we had a break. <laughs> you had a... You, I can't even take credit for this. This is beyond brilliant. You get all the credit for this, my friend. Go. I don't know why some of this material comes up on breaks. <laughs> because Have you noticed that? Because usually we're laughing. <laughs> and, here's how, and here's how it works. Hear us out. Now, because it's Joe Biden... He orders somebody to get him a hard copy of the Urban Dictionary. If you don't know what Urban Dictionary is, Google it, Bing it, Google it, whatever, uh, and, and find out. He then randomly opens it up to a random page, blindfolded, points his finger down at something in there, and whatever it lands on, if you're the ch- he chooses a different staffer every week. Whatever it lands on, if you're the chosen staffer, you either have to bring him a live example of or perform in front of him said task or said thing from Urban Dictionary. I think it's a brilliant idea. Um, I, first of all, you, have to, you had to articulate that you know, Biden would be wearing a bi- blindfold. I think that's four hours out of his day anyhow. <laughs> I, I want people to know he's probably not going to put the blindfold on just for this particular incident. Right, and so it made it con- more convenient. <laughs> uh, okay, who's up next? Hank. All right, Hank, here we go. <laughs> Cleveland Steamer. <laughs> <laughs> who's next? <laughs> No, we skipped last week. We didn't. Ah, I don't care. I want another one anyways. <laughs> just the whole staff is just running around doing stupid ass things. Trump's going crazy just throwing stuff down the hall at them. <laughs> oh, yeah. He's from the flower shirt team. <laughs> flower shirt team. Okay. I think it's a brilliant idea. So, dare Joe, Joe Biden, we dare you 
to have Urban Dictionary roulette. Absolutely. You could do it as vice president. <laughs> Absolutely. Got a lot more money. Yeah, good point. Um, so the FBI is investigating um, Hillary Clinton's private email server. And they're investigating to see uh, how secure it is. And the Clinton attorney uh, confirmed this uh, yesterday, on, on, on Tuesday. Um, there was uh, the State Department and the intelligence community asked the, the Justice Department to, to s determine if classified material was, in fact, improperly shared or stored um, on her private email server and also to check for the, um, um, the, the security level um, of of that server to see if, the, if any of those documents were in fact safe or could have been compromised or whatnot, and uh, of course you know Clinton's attorney says, oh, well you know hey we of course we want to make sure that oh well yeah everything is uh, we want to be on the up there. and up Burnham right uh, <laughs> David Kendall is is the uh, he's like subliminal message man what did you just say no we want to make sure everything's on the up and up Burnham right. <laughs> Right, it worked. It, it worked for Lerner. I, I I heard you say up and up, and then you said so. I didn't say anything else. Burn them. All I just said was we want to make sure our servers burn them around the up and up, and I want the FBI burn them to be able to go in and check to prove to the American burn them no, people. I'm, I'm saying I'm saying burn them like burn them to disc. Like let's preserve everything. What do you What do you think I mean by that? That's a completely defensible statement. Qualifier. Uh, so, so David Kendall, who's the attorney for for the Clintons. Um, has said, quote, quite predictably, after um, after the uh, the basically the inspector general made a referral to ensure that materials remain properly stored, the government is seeking assurance about the storage of those materials. We are actively cooperating. I don't know what active cooperation looks like. It means they haven't got a warrant, and you're not touching it without a warrant. Is right. probably what that means. Actively so, cooperating doesn't mean I'm giving over what it, right. Investigation into the security level um, of those those private email servers that that she was using. Um, it was not a criminal referral. It was a quote counterintelligence referral. Right. We want to make sure that they weren't breached from an OTAN agency. Now, I have a question for you. Yes. Do you think that there's a potential? Let me set the stage. Hillary Clinton. Is, inter is being interviewed by an FBI agent investigating this. It's a one-on-one -on -one interrogation. She's wearing a skirt and a blouse. Nope, pantsuit. Hang on. Hear me out. It's my story. She's wearing a skirt and a blouse. The I know agent, where you're going with this. The agent is facing her. Oh, God, no. Is there a basic instinct moment no. while she tries to get away no. from this thing? No. <laughs> no. No. <laughs> Why? <laughs> Why? If my brain had a cornea, it would just be burned. Um, uh, no, I knew exactly where you'd go with this. Damn it! Because uh, it's on the board in red as a topic. Why? No, no, no. Oh man, that's horrific. Everybody just vomited at the same time in the chat room. On the keyboard, which is why there's no more activity. Oh, why would you do that? Seriously, that's horrific. We ate lunch just a little while ago. I'm actually nauseous. I, it's horrific. Uh, good point. Matt says there's a reason she has to wear a pantsuit and not a skirt. Uh, maybe things have to get held into place. I don't know. All right? I don't know. I don't want to know. Let's just go maybe back. Maybe they're folded into place. Let's just go back to the server thing, and we'll go from there. Because we were talking. <laughs> um. Uh, Listen, this could be either a really good thing or a really bad thing. If <clears throat> now the, the 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 Clinton campaign did say that she did not send quote she did not send nor receive any emails that were marked classified at the time. Oh, we want to ensure that appropriate procedures are followed as these emails are reviewed while not unduly delaying the release of her emails. What does that mean? What? Not unduly what? delaying the release. <laughs> so you want to delay them duly? Du duly, du 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 you want to duly delay them, not unduly relate. What does that even mean? Du du 
d- that's politician doublespeak. <laughs> we don't want to not 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 provide them access to the not server, um, but we just want to make sure that we can not not get in trouble for it. So you know, I that's kind of where we're going with that, um, and yeah. No, this is absolutely ridiculous. Listen, this could be a double-edged sword. If they find out that these servers were compromised and Mrs. Clinton's emails as Secretary of the State were compromised specifically by a foreign nation's intelligence bureau, and that's it doesn't even matter if the information is sensitive or not, anything that should have been sent on the secured Department of State server that was not, we now have evidence to move forward with prosecution right because perhaps but will they or is this a potential ploy to go the other way with to it. go the other way hey, and the say, fbi scrubs my hey, server out and everything hey the, F- the fbi investigated right. and there was no wrongdoing no. found everything was fine like i said it is a double-edged sword uh, so which which way is it is this a truly impartial investigation and look i have based upon the history with this particular justice department you never know i have my doubts right I, I honestly have my doubts about whether this is an up and up investigation or inquiry or whatever it is they want to call it well, uh, versus, uh, well, oh, yeah, we looked into it and it was fine. Why is there not independent counsel on this right now? Why is this something that there is not independent counsel? Uh, because, like you said, the because DOJ. Boner, because Boner is the speaker? Because the DOJ is, in my opinion, complicit, right? <laughs> We saw it with everything that's going on with the IRS and Lerner and the Tea Party groups, etc. We know those facts. We've seen him dodge things with Fast and the Furious. You had the former head of the sta- um, Justice Department refuse to prosecute himself. Excuse yeah, you're, you're, himself. You're, you're, you're in contempt. No, I'm not. Yep. No, I'm good. I'm good. So to turn around and suggest that it is on the up and up is BS. It's bunk. So an independent counsel. Listen. We got independent counsel and we wanted to find out if Bill Clinton got a steamer in the office, right? Right. This is far more important. Did you say left A or got A? <laughs> this is far more important uh, than anything Bill Clinton did in the office, really. <laughs> Nobody really cares at that point. Um, and, and I think independent special prosecutor is probably something that should be present right now in this case. Um, th- there's plenty of reason to dig into this and look further there's plenty of reason that her servers should be in the hands of forensic technology experts there's a bunch of different ways that we they should go with this whether they will or not oh that's a totally different answer like you said boners the speaker of the house uh, he's a coward i mean look at he wouldn't even force them to vote on defunding planned parenthood last week before break Right. And, and even just to delay, and like I said, even if they just go in and delay the vote, hey, you know what? We're going to hold off any money until after we get back and figure this out. Okay, great. At least you did something. Yes, no, vote no. We know who stands what. Have a nice day. But no. Didn't even force it. So he's a coward, and everybody knows it. The problem is, is we need somebody with the spine besides Trey Gowdy and a few handful of others Mm -hmm. who are actually going to go after Hillary the way she should. Look at her poll numbers are starting to take a hit and she's starting to slide Uh down. Um, It's one of those things that. Could boost her numbers. Oh, look, see. Right. Oh, no, she's fine. I don't know what you guys are worried about. Everything's okay with this server. Yeah, there's still Benghazi and a bunch of other things. But, you know, this server thing's out of the way. Um, so I, I think it's definitely something that an independent prosecutor, and, and you know, Matt in the chat room has pointed out she won't win. I don't think she'll win either. But, however, the reality is is it, this isn't about winning or losing. This is about whether or not she should be prosecuted. Mm-hmm. Um, I, I don't think, I said this a month ago, two months ago now, I don't think Hillary Clinton's going to survive Benghazi. I don't think, uh, as far as winning the election, I think it will force her to drop out. Um, and, and Which is why, as I said earlier in the show, you now see Biden ramping up and, and all of a sudden the talk's there. Everyone knows Hillary Clinton is the political equivalent right now to the Hindenburg. She's nose in. 
and the static charge is coming. And her campaign will crash and burn. Um, you know, there's another stat released the other night that I think it was between 2007 and 2014 or something like that. The Clintons donated like $15 million to charity mm -hmm. and claimed all their taxes. And all of it went to the Clinton Foundation, which puts money back in their pocket. So I think everybody knows how shady the Clintons are. I think if all Hillary Clinton has done by running is dragging out all the filthy laundry that has been put aside for years for the Clintons. Um, I don't think she stands a snowball's chance in hell of being the choice for the Democrats. I don't think it's going to happen. Um, but I don't even care about that right now. I go back to Benghazi, and that's the big one. This woman needs to be prosecuted, in my opinion. I, look, I, I agree with you on that. There's so much with her, and... I, I really hope the the Justice Department is able to do a, a truly independent, impartial investigation. I, I said I truly oh, hope. Sorry, sorry. I truly hope. Sorry. And that if something is found, that that evidence is preserved. Hey, if the email, if they were not secure, if classified information did go out, I hope that information is preserved, and that the right thing is done whatever that is whether it's charges whether whether now a criminal investigation is launched something if nothing legitimately is found then that's fine too mm -hmm. as long as the investigation is done in an impartial manner i don't believe that to be the case i i don't i don't believe that if it, i don't believe that there's nothing there or maybe there or that there wasn't something there mm -hmm. And that maybe they'd be able to pick up a trace of it on a computer forensic. I don't. I don't know. I don't know what their investigation is going to entail or how they're going to conduct it. Um, but I truly hope that it is an, a, a, independent, and that if if she absolutely did nothing wrong, then I hope the the inquiry reflects that. I, I truly do. Right. If she did, however, then I hope that the inquiry reflects that as well. And and, and I always go back to um, Petraeus, right? Mm -hmm. The Petraeus standard is set. Yes. Nobody is too too far and above prosecution. Not at all. Nobody. She signed the paperwork. It was a mandated thing. She was supposed to keep her stuff on the server. She was supposed to use secured lines for the server. These are Department of States... Uh, sorry, these are the Department of State Affairs. Mm -hmm. These are not emails about her grandkid or there aren't emails about Chelsea's wedding or anything like that there are people who could have lost their lives should the wrong email have been sent and received, or intercepted or that's what I mean yeah compromised so you know matter for the people whose lives were potentially jeopardized how convenient is it really you and I both have smartphones and we have um, we have our, you know, we have different accounts linked to oh, it. Oh yeah, yeah. So she could have, I think, right? Right. It, it, I'm sure in her head. I'm sure in her head, she was trying to keep it separate for a reason. So right. certain things could not come out. Could not be discovered in a PRA. Right. Exactly. Right. Freedom of Information Act is a big deal. Well, you move everything onto a private server and it changes it. Mm -hmm. Well, a State Department emails. Ooh, yeah, but this one's saved on a private server. So you would have the access to the email, but we can't access. like that it was they, they i want to feel good i want to be the person that I, I am so not prejudiced i'll elect the first black president you know what he says i haven't a goddamn clue but i'm still voting for him and it happened like wildfire i know people who now admitted to it i well, do too i just wanted to be i just wanted to be involved in it but you didn't hear what he said and they're doing that with Hillary now, or right? they didn't pay attention, or they or they wanted to, they knew. or they disregarded, right? They Absolutely. turned a blind eye to it. They never vetted him, which he is was, worse, right? 
in my opinion. It, it, that is, and for those that are turning a blind eye to things Hillary Clinton may have done. Not you, Agador. And, and blatant bigot. No, there you I, go again. No, I'm just, there you go again. You said it. No, you said that. It's horrible. Can't if I said it, I would have said turn blind eyes towards or away from. <laughs> yeah, and it's all me, right? It's all me on this show. No, I was using an example. I said if I were to oh, have okay. heard that. All right, that's fine. That's no, there's, fine. there's a difference. Have, have you seen the latest with Debbie Wasserman Schultz? Oh, she has no idea what the difference between socialism and Democrats are. Neither do I. <laughs> so, I actually have to agree with Debbie Wasserman Schultz on something. She admitted to what all of us have been saying for a long time. Right. The Democrats are socialists. Right, through omission. Yes. An admission through omission. And even Chris Matthews, who I couldn't believe he asked her that question. Right. What is God? Has he, he must be off the bottle. I, I don't Every know. Every once in a while, he acts like he's actually impartial. A journalist. Right. It's. She looked at, at what the DNC stood for and looked at what socialism stood for, and she said, eh, eh, there's no difference, so I can't answer this. <laughs> Ooh, well, most of it comes into the spelling. You see, the Democrat name starts with a D. Socialism starts with an S. Um, I could go further on down the list, Chris, but if you could just put it up, uh, I don't know how to spell socialism. That's what her response pretty much was. <laughs> There is no difference between Democrats and socialism anymore. It, it, I hate to say it. I feel which is. Well, what was it? Time Magazine that ran that 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 uh, the the covers that said, "Are we socialists now, or we're socialists now, or right. something like that?" And look at you. There are socialist governments out there. You look at France. I always tell people that people think that there are no socialist governments. France is an absolute socialist government. Yes. And, and, and so they exist, and they started by being... No, it's a democratic republic. But it's socialism. They admit to it over there. But democratic. But a democratic <laughs> elected socialism. And they admit to it over there that it's socialism. And they started as being progressives over there. That's how all that started. The progressive left pushed it way forward in France. Um, by the way, did I tell you about the French self-defense video I saw? No. It's just a guy running away from a camera. <laughs> oh man are we up against a break yes we're gonna go a little early because i have another commercial i want to play for our good friend that you just insulted not a few minutes ago you it, you you insulted you insulted him we'll be right times back. are dark the people are misled by corrupt politicians lied to by establishment media and deceived by the false messages of islam a nation looking for direction needs a guide. It needs a man with a cane. I'm Dave Milner. Join me on Spreaker, SHR Media, Pundit Press Radio, and YouTube through the SHR Media page for a different kind of commentary on the unpleasant blind guy. Because In a world controlled by corrupt politicians. You got a business. That, you didn't build that. A team of ordinary men emerge from the ashes to give voice to the voiceless and hope to the hopeless. Sackhead Sean. Dude, I'm not saying cow for the stupid pro. Sackhead Clint. All good friends of ours usually show, show up drunk. drunk. Also starring Sako as the producer. I'm a little bit drunk, I'm a little bit drunk, cause I'm drinking, drinking, drinking. They are the Sackheads Radio Show. Every Wednesday at 8 p.m. Pacific on shrmedia.com. This is Tammy Jackson, 
inviting you to join me on the Tammy Jackson Show every Tuesday night at 7 p.m. Pacific on the 405radio.com. Put down that remote and tune into the show that covers politics, guns in the Second Amendment, religious liberties, sanctity of life, the military, and more. I host newsworthy guests and work hard to be a conservative radio show that's not like all the others. So save Tuesday nights at 7 p.m. Pacific from me, Tammy Jackson, on the 405media.com. Who listens to the Andrea K. Show? Let's find out as we eavesdrop on listener Roger Johnson in Encinitas. You know, if our policy is going to be bring any child, any child who comes across the border, Okay, so apparently Roger fell asleep in the middle of my brilliant political tirade, and now he plans to sue me because I put him on the air? Sleeping? Obviously, he's a liberal. Snoring. Not an option while listening to The Andrea K. Show, Tuesday mornings at 11 on Financial News and Talk. You know I'm right. Y'all know I'm right. today that the Constitution is outdated because it addresses problems peculiar to the 18th century. Some parts of the Constitution do read rather quaintly. Consider the injunction against titles of nobility in Article 1, Section 9 of the Constitution. But is that so outdated? The purpose of the injunction is to prevent the government granting special privileges to some for partisan reasons. This strikes at the heart of the rule of law. The crony capitalism so common today is a place where the government bestows favors and tax dollars on some businesses to give them a leg up over others. This is exactly the kind of thing the Constitution was meant to prohibit. The Constitution is not so outdated after all. This Constitution Minute was brought to you by Hillsdale College. To join the national conversation on the Constitution, go to constitutionminute.com. And ladies and gentlemen, welcome back. No, not yet. Hold on. Screwing it up here. Where the hell is Sarko when you need him? Welcome back to the Sackheads Radio Show. Live at the SHR Media Network. Pulling in the last 30 minutes around the show. We're in the last turn. We're heading down the home stretch. We're nailing it as where, uh, where is Sako? We're tacking it. I think we're we're, we're thumb tack. We're pushing. We're scotch taping this show tonight. I'll tell you what. We are scotch taping it together. <laughs> I can't read the last topic. I don't have my glasses. It's it's your to- it's your topic. <laughs> is it really? So yeah. So the the Navy is investigating. Um, is investigating the lieutenant commander who used um, a weapon. To fire back at the Chattanooga gunman, um, who's the one that was uh, uh, shot and killed five servicemen. Um, and they said that uh, charges are not uh, completely ruled out at this point. Yeah. But the man is a hero. Right. He engaged a terrorist to try to save lives. kept him from focusing on other people, then why shouldn't he be considered a hero? Yeah. And it's Lieutenant Commander Timothy uh, White, Timothy White mm-hmm. of the United States Navy who was on base. He was now, in, they're not allowed to carry weapons inside military recruiting and reserve stations. Right. Which... to assault his installation. The man... Uh, I he defended his post. I understand the letter of the law. But I think he defended his post. Absolutely. And can you? Can he? could he not find a regulation that allows him to defend his post? I hope so. When fired upon? I hope so. I don't know the regulation offhand. I don't either. But I'm saying, could he... Is there... I would imagine there's a regulation that, hey, if you're fired upon... You can return fire and defend your post. I don't know that there is. Well, I... And I don't know what the specifics of that would be, but that would seem like a logical defense to me. Right. And a lot... Of, listen, you know what needs and to happen? And we do have a fundamental right to self-defense we do. in this country. We do. But you know what really needs to happen? Is that 
Secretary of the Navy needs to come out and say, yeah, he's not being charged. Let's move on, please. Right. Well, no, I no. No, this comes from the top. You know what? No, it's not going to happen. The commander-in-chief said. Right. If this president wants anybody to look at him with... We won't charge the Justice Department. Uh, we won't charge Holder with contempt. Right. What makes you think that we're going to charge this hero for defending his post? But you know what? Matt said it in the chat room. It'd be interesting to see how far up the push to prosecute him is coming from. Absolutely. You know, I think uh, Matt said it as well as he's probably going to get charged with a hate crime. You know, like, who knows at this point? The fact that they're even entertaining yeah, prosecution. Did, did he violate the civil rights the of civil somebody rights who was terrorism? exercising their First Amendment right to right. freedom he's of religion? He's an American citizen, and this soldier attacked him. Ooh. Now, that's an interesting... That's an interesting <laughs> argument that you just made for the prosecution. Sorry, sailor. That's an interesting argument you just made for the prosecution. Hey, Posse Comitatus specifically prohibits the United States military from engaging in law enforcement action. The military As on a United States... On an installation. On a United States citizen. <laughs> Because he was performing a law enforcement function. No, well then I would turn. You're, around. you're evil. I would turn around and say no. He was defending, defending a military post. I wouldn't even say that during he an was, act of war. He was defending himself and somebody else as a citizen, which he has the right to do, right? But he was in uniform, right. so let's just say he was defending his post as a member of the United States military against an. Him or picked up rocks and threw it back at him. Right. When push came to shove, when the rubber met the road, he chose to engage an armed individual with a rifle, and he did so with a pistol. Again, being involved in stopping the shooter. Wow, where have we seen that before? Oh, right, Garland, Texas. Um, oh, wait, where? Have, yeah, we've seen that a couple other places too. Oklahoma, Oklahoma with the Oklahoma, beheading right, in the Beheading in yeah. the guy with the pistol stopped the attack. It doesn't really matter, though. Right? Let's just throw this guy in the can. I mean, this is ridiculous. When it gets to the point that we prosecute... Uh, five days on the beach because you weren't supposed to have your gun on you. And you can take those in time... And, and literally the beach. Here's a ticket to Hawaii. Exactly. Like, we're going to appease the letter of the law. So we did something as under the... We did something to say to you, you sh probably shouldn't do this again. Wink, wink, nudge, nudge. Um, here's your award. And part of that award is funny. It's going to be plane tickets to Hawaii um, that are dated for the same five days uh, that we're going to suspend you. Um, also, it comes with hotel and accommodations on behalf of Grateful Nation, all the people who... You're flying are military here. standby. <laughs> <laughs> so if you get there within three or four days of when you're supposed to be, good luck. Um, no, when we get to the point that we prosecute outright heroes... Um, for being heroes. For being heroes and putting their own lives at risk to save others. And listen, this wasn't a Rambo moment. This wasn't a moment where he was just trying to... But, Here's a guy who recognized that other people's lives are at risk, and he engaged risking his to save others, willing to give, and that it's one of those things. His action alone shows that he is absolutely willing to give his life to stop this guy right. and save others. Why is the word prosecution even friggin' being discussed? How's this? The sheriff of that county says, uh, hey, I just deputized him, and it's retroactive to one day before the attack. Therefore, uh... Uh, we think he was acting in a law enforcement function. <laughs> We're investigating as an officer involved shooting. <laughs> oh, and he's cleared. And by the way, we just gave him three weeks vacation <laughs> and a promotion. <laughs> How great would that be? Alexa, Ed Clint, Sheriff. <laughs> 
2014. Um, <laughs> 2014. <laughs> 2001. No, but six. you know what? I This is one of those things that people need to start right away. You, you need to get in touch with your senators, your congressmen. Call the Navy. Seriously, light up their phone lines. Call the White House. Call the White House. Start the online petitions. Get people rallied about this because... Not enough people are standing up and pissed off. This is ridiculous. Absolutely ridiculous. I have a story we need to get to. We came three minutes over. I, I, I just wish him the best of luck, and I just hope that I do too. It, it doesn't happen. No, we're behind him. All right. Uh, I, I saw this story a little bit ago, and I was, I was impressed. You, you, you and I actually discussed it, and I think it's, I, I think it's, it's pretty outstanding. Um, so there's a new push that could potentially uh, derail the whole um, I- Iran deal, uh, and I think it is absolutely brilliant, and I wish I knew uh, whose idea it was. Um, but in 1992, um, the uh, United States passed a law, signed into law, which allowed American victims of state-sponsored terror to um, go after uh, civilly to sue, basically, uh, any of the governments that finance the attacks that killed or injured or that, that, they were, that these victims were involved with. Uh, so that has been done. There have been families who have been awarded judgments specifically against uh, the country of Iran, state sponsor of terror, uh, for attacks that have been committed between 1995 and 2006 by terror groups that have been supported by Iran. Ju- judgments have, judgments have, been, have been levied, and Iran has kind of has failed to comply. They've kind of thumbed their nose at, at the whole thing. That's I know, so ridiculous, right? They follow the rules so, set. the families... Of these American victims of these Iran, uh, Iran-sponsored terrorist acts, mm-hmm. filed a federal lawsuit to stop the frozen assets that the government wants to release to Iran as part of this nuclear deal. Yep. So they file a lawsuit saying, "No, no, no! I understand this nuclear deal is that we really part of the deal is that we release the frozen assets, but we're filing a lawsuit to stop that." Because we have a stake in those frozen assets in the form of lawful judgments based upon this 1992 law that you, United States government, put on the books for us to be able to go after them and collect. And therefore, because you put that mechanism in place and we followed your rules and we have these judgments, you can now not turn around and release those assets, which are the only thing that we have to hold on to in obedience to a court order for, to or court orders from from our judgments it gives you a little bit of hope in mankind doesn't it, it it's it, nice it kind of does see, it's nice to see the system work for the people for once and we'll see if we'll see if a judge actually has the the testicular fortitude to stop it How and to say hey not? you know what yeah you can't release those assets because they actually belong to these victims per judgments or they have a claim to them right. therefore because they have a claim to them you can't release them and then could that derail the whole deal just a backdoor thing um the the, the lawsuit was filed in uh, u.s district court for the southern district of new york um there were uh, about uh, 24 25 to over two dozen plaintiffs that claim hey we're owed hundreds of millions of dollars in damages um, from Iran, and they they haven't they haven't paid it, and our only our only leverage we have is these is these frozen assets. So we'll take that now, right? So we want them to pay almost two billion dollars in the judgments and 
promise to stop sponsoring terror through like Hezbollah, Hamas, and so forth. Right, their usual proxies. It would be amazing if enough people could get together to call it a wash. Right? So say the judge says, yeah, you know what? They get a point injunction. You can't go any further with the Iran deal. Or you can't release the frozen assets. Right. Well, Now you'd have to rework the deal, maybe. No, no, no. We're not saying the deal's invalid. You just can't release these assets. Those monies cannot move. And because we... Yeah. And then all of a sudden you start seeing other people show up. Well, my family was a victim. My family was victimized. Hey, anyone in Locker... Uh, not Lockerbie, Scotland, but anyone from around the world right. who is affected by Iran's terror attacks could come here and file a lawsuit potentially against Iran. Right. You may have Israelis who... And and there's a belief that once these assets are unfrozen and Iran now has access to them again, they're going to use some of that money to fund additional terror. Yep. Um, and Matt's nailed it in the chat room. Anyone who's got relatives who are Israeli... Yeah. Um, or... or Why not get on board? Why not completely use this to bankrupt this portion of the deal with Iran? And more importantly, you know what? Our justice system for something like this, which... Uh, things like this, because it's almost like the False Hope Society. Right. Um, oh, we'll let you sue the uh, state of Iran through our country, because blah, that's almost like saying, hey, instead of us bombing them to get we should get out of them, uh, you could sue them instead, because it seems nicer, but they're never going to pay you. I think these sort of... But we, already, but we have frozen assets to well, now at we have least leverage. have a claim to, right? Right. Now it's different. Even John Kerry says that, you can't be tru that, that Iran can't be trusted. And he brokered the deal. He, he negotiated the deal on behalf of the U.S., Yep. Kerry said, quote, I operate on the presumption that Iran is a fundamental danger, that they are engaged in negative activities throughout the region, and that they're so destabilizing places, that they consider Israel a fundamental enemy at, at this moment in time. So the, the, the guy that negotiated the deal on behalf of our country... What do we get out of it? Right. He admits that. Hey. We what, can't trust him. What are the odds that we could get enough people... To file lawsuits in this to completely cause a wash in those assets. I don't know. You have how many victims between what ninety five and two thousand um, two thousand six, uh, and the judgments are about two billion. We're talking about approximately one hundred billion in frozen assets. Yeah, but what if people or frozen funds? So two thousand six. I, I, usually fifteen years or so is going to be your. So that's an eleven year period. So nine years would take us to 2015. Let's say you get another five billion. I mean, I don't think you reached that 100 billion mark, but as long as it's an unknown number, you can't release any right of the now, assets, right? Right now, it takes one person to file an additional... To file a and then just before they come to another... Uh, uh, Oh, hey, somebody else's hat's going to get tossed in the ring, too. And somebody else's hat. And somebody else's hat. And, and really, if you are... If you are have been victimized by Iran, and you've had no other way to get even with them... Look, I, I think... I th that they have caused therefore is not every American citizen potentially a victim Ooh. even if only emotionally affected Ooh. Ooh. I'd like to file a complaint against the state of Iran on behalf of the American people for years class action lawsuit class action lawsuit we're scared to the tune of how much money is left in the pot doesn't matter. Let's go above the pot and negotiate it down to what's left in the pot. <laughs> <laughs> I want to make sure that uh, uh, the people who were physically harmed over there... Uh, first. First. Absolutely. Yes. Take care of them. Anyone whose name didn't make the list, we'll figure that out afterwards, and we'll have a foundation set up for that. Right. We'll just contact the Census Bureau. Absolutely. We'll, we'll make sure... We'll attach happen. the Census report as the list of plaintiffs. Um, and then... <laughs> 
And then they can opt out. The Census Bureau <laughs> and have an opt out system. <laughs> Uh, do I want to sue Iran? Yeah, what the hell? <laughs> In the United States, what's the population? 316, 318. So, uh, at $1 billion a piece is... how? Guess who just walked in, ladies and bum, gentlemen. Bum, bum. I just got a whole hell of a lot hairier in here. <laughs> hey, hey, sweep up that sawdust. Hey, hey. Were you just rolling on your back in the corner of the cage all night? What's going on? Sawdust just trailed you in. <laughs> Come on, there's a good point oh, there. Okay. We're going to stick. <laughs> we stick to it. So, uh, so, uh, let's, so let's see. If we do one billion a piece uh -huh. times the population of the United States. <laughs> yeah, I don't know how to fly. <laughs> They'll have to give me flight lessons, too. They build that in. <laughs> and then just on the way out, just drop one on that nuke plant, just for fun. <laughs> no, fully armed. Just oh, oh I, wasn't, I wasn't supposed to push that button? Fully armed. Sorry, I'm still learning. Fully armed, just like it came to you. That's how I want it back. <laughs> oh, that would be so great. What a brilliant idea you had. You. <sighs> Which is the more brilliant idea, that or Urban Dictionary Roulette. <laughs> That's a tough that, one. That, because you know what? Is Urban Dictionary Roulette's funny. This is potentially something that could actually stop this Iran deal from going through. And the money alone keeping out of their hands means that terrorism has been stifled. If It's not stopped, but it will be stifled considerably because that money's not going to their support of terror. Right, it won't be bolstered. It will not be bolstered. So I, I, I don't think it's a tough one. I think it's a very simple one. I think that's absolutely... Are you going to the federal courthouse tomorrow? I, I can't tomorrow. All right, maybe Thursday. Friday. Tomorrow is Thursday. Maybe Friday. What day do you think this is? I don't know. So if tomorrow's the day, if today's Tuesday, uh -huh. the day after tomorrow is Thursday, uh -huh. and the debates are tomorrow, tomorrow right. would be Wednesday. Wednesday is a regular show day. You just said we'd have a show. Okay, I'll see you tomorrow night at 8 p.m. Pacific here on the SHR Media Network in Bizarro Land. Oh, in Bizarro Land. <laughs> <laughs> we can't do a show tomorrow night. I really wish I could, but we will absolutely get caught up on the debates. You, my friend, had the idea of the night. You had two great ideas, but certainly the idea of the night with the Iran thing. And I really can't take full credit for it because somebody already filed these suits to freeze these funds, yeah, which I think is brilliant. Yeah, but you've expanded it to every American person to try to get the totality of those funds seized. Right. Um, and I'll tell you what, I'm scared as hell. Um, I, I, they absolutely... Um, Iran scares me. That's all I'm saying. We've talked about it before, though. I'm sure we can find an archive. Yeah. Um, and uh, I forget what article... Um, what was the name of that article that you read from? I'm sorry, because I was asked uh, in the chat room about that. R right now? Yes. Uh, the article that I read was uh, Victims of Iranian Terror Sue to Block Release of Frozen Funds on okay. um, foxnews.com. Okay. Uh, under the uh, World Home Terrorism tab... Is where I uh, is where I found that story. Good because there are actually people who um, Matt in the chat room. His cousin was actually uh, killed in Fallujah, believed by the Mujahideen, um, which was supported by the Iranians and is interested. So seriously, if you had somebody who was victimized by I Iranian involvement here abroad, wherever, look, contact perhaps contact the attorneys yeah. uh, out of out of New York that are filing this and see I, 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 if they're willing to expand. Yeah. I don't know. I don't know. Let's find out because the, if you have been victimized by Iran, this is your money. You have the right to this potentially. If, there, if there's a judgment. Yeah. I but you can sue under that 92, 1992 law. Yeah, I absolutely think so. We're not attorneys. We don't provide legal advice. But it, it seems logical. I can. We know that law exists. Legal advice only. Um, and, and cooking. You give good cooking advice. I, do, I haven't cooked anything good in a while, but you're right. 
Normally I do. I got to get back on that wagon at some point. Um, yeah, so I, I, a lot of good things going on tonight. This has been fun. And finally, Sako showed up. And I'm so happy. Sako, our listeners want to know where you were last week. And for most of tonight. They missed you. People so have been wondering. <laughs> People missed you. Are you okay? You doing all right? I had, I had some unexpected guests show up. and. Uh, okay, so strippers. I just what was his st- name? Strippers. I'll give, it long, I'll, I'll give you the short version. Okay, quick, because we get about two minutes. Short version is unexpected guest shows up. On Tuesday. Uh huh. Shows on Wednesday. Shows up on Tuesday. I end up in Vegas on the weekend. Did you get it? Okay, Wednesday's not the weekend. I know. That's how long it was. Wait, wait. What? And now I come back in town Monday, and now I'm back here again. So hang on a second. So I'm if they came into town on Tuesday, and you left for Vegas on the weekend, you were still in town on Wednesday. Yeah, but he was. But he was with them because they're more important than we are. What happened? Oh, did did your um, did your cell service go down? It must uh, have been broken, actually. Because I didn't get a text. Maybe maybe our service went down. Maybe I did too. I, I texted you last week, but my my phone did die a few times. Uh huh. I did get your messages. Wait, were you back in Vegas after we just got back from Vegas? Guys, I can't really talk about it. You suck. <laughs> did you get a phone call inviting us to Vegas? Nothing. Did you really? say anything? No. I couldn't even get a response. I didn't even get a response about, hey, what guys. Last week, are you so, alive? Not even in Vegas, right? Two words. Right. Two words. Six, right. six, six, six letters and a space. All you'd have to say is Vegas. In Vegas. Vegas. I'd be like, all right, cool. Right, Vegas. That's all I needed. But he, he doesn't even love us enough. Or V-Town. Well, you know what's see, funny? What you see, Sako, you know what's funny is when there's a brotherhood, you're supposed to do things for certain people. You need to watch a series called Band of Brothers. It's essentially kind of like this, well, I'm but gonna say, I, not I really. I sleep for like three days straight. Uh, Ladies and gentlemen, that's there. it here for the Sackheads Radio Show live on the SHR Media Network. We, we did find Sako, which was one well, mission Sokka objective we had tonight. Well, yeah, that's the right. Mission objective completed. We'll be back next Wednesday. And, uh, actually, I'll be off. I think Clint's going to be here next Wednesday at 8 p.m. Pacific. Um, and tomorrow morning, check out Dan Butcher and uh, Jersey Joe. They're going to be sitting in on the Edge of Liberty tomorrow and Friday for me and most likely next week. They just don't know it yet. <laughs> we'll talk to you later. I appreciate everyone being here tonight. Have a good rest of your evening. Are you by phone evening. next week, or are you just totally out? I, I don't know. I'm going to try. I'm gonna try. Is Sako gonna be here next week? I don't know. We get a because I can't. Out. I can't turn the power. I can't turn this thing no, on. No, I know you tripped over the light switch. The best. In conservative talk, the Sackhead Sean and Sackhead Clint, uh, and uh, we're working on some immigration papers for a certain other guy who happens to work here too. But. <laughs> <laughs> For those who are tuning in around the world to the best and late night conservative talk, Sackheads Radio. I'm pretty sure it was the biggest spider I've ever seen.